Alright guys, it's Sunday and you know what that means. We have another Silver History Day today. Um, as you can see in front of you, these are not miniature Silver Eagles, but instead they are the Walking Liberty Half Dollar. And so that's what we'll be discussing today. These can be extremely collectible with great numismatic potential. However, as you can tell, the ones I have in front of you are just junky junk and um, that's okay with me. I still find them beautiful and so that's what we're gonna do today. This one gets a little bit juicy and it kind of shows you just how much it means to the engravers and the designers to have their name associated with a particular design. And so this one has a lot of uh, reality TV show-esque drama involved and so we're gonna get right into it. So first things first, the reason the Walking Liberty Half Dollar was even made was because at the time there was a new mint director and the new mint director's name was Robert A. Woolley and in 1915 he thought um, that it was required by law to make a change to the face of American coinage every 25 years and so that was since found out to be a quote unquote misinterpretation of coinage laws but had the mint director not even misinterpreted that to begin with, the barber half dollar may have been around for an even longer time. Uh, it was actually the Commission of Fine Arts that ended up informing him that, hey, you're not required to do this. But it was because of that that we pushed this new design coming out. So basically, he was talking to the Commission of Fine Arts and they didn't like the proposals for the new coinage submitted by the old Mr. Barber, the one that did the Barber dime, the Barber half dollar and quarter. So they suggested that <clears throat> there would be some new artists that were chosen instead of just like practical coiners, which is what Bar Mr. Barber was. And that hopefully they would have a background in sculpture and that they would choose three of them and under best case scenario, each artist would end up claiming a coin. So they would have six submissions, uh, obverse and a reverse for the dime, the quarter, and the half dollar, and that there would be three different artists, one responsible for each coin. But basically what happened was Adolf Weinman, the guy who actually designed this coin, ended up getting the mercury dime approved, the obverse and the reverse, the half dollar, the walking liberty half dollar, obverse and reverse, and the reverse of the quarter. So he won five out of six available faces of coins that were going to be redone. So pretty much Adolf Weinman was a coinage artist master type guy. And we can thank him for this beautiful coinage, along with the mercury dime, which you guys know is one of my favorites. So, but this is Liberty. And she's got the Stars and Stripes flag kind of draped over her shoulder. And she is progressing, like she's walking towards the sun. And that's supposed to symbolize the dawn of a new day. And she's carrying branches of laurel and oak. That's what those are. And that's symbolic of uh, civil and military glory. And then she has her hand kind of reached out here. You see that? And that's just supposed to be showing kind of the spirit of liberty. And then the reverse is this eagle, and he's on a big mountain crag, apparently. And his wings are kind of, they're not folded up. And that's just showing you his fearless spirit and power. After a lot of work, this walking liberty half dollar was almost improved entirely. Um, basically, the initial problems were... It used to say Liberty right here, where my finger is pointing, above this In God We Trust. And it used to not have the Liberty up top. And on the back, it used to say Half Dollar right here, above the wings of the eagle. And then it used to not say this E Pluribus Unum at all. But we wanted to add that to the coin, so um, in order to get, like, there's a thing in coinage called a fin. And I've heard of some recent examples where there's a fin, like, on the 
um, the Queen's Beast coins, where if you were to like take it and put it up against this foam and kind of do that, you would scratch the foam and flakes of silver would fall off. And so the initial design had an issue with thinning. And so they needed to separate out all of these letters and words and put them in new spots in order to make sure that if they ended up wanting to get uh, a good relief on this coin, they had to kind of space out the lettering in order to make it even across the coin instead of like overloading one side over the other. So after all of that was worked out, and they were about to approve this in, this coin entirely. So let's get into the juicy Hollywood gossip we have going on with this guy. So basically, since all of Barber's designs were denied and rejected by the Mint, he was still a part of the process because he was a decent engraver. And he was like throwing wrenches into the works and giving these guys obstacles and trying to make it as hard as possible for these other artists to succeed. And um, he was just pretty much doing everything he could to discredit the designs of the new coinage. And Mr. Barber wrote a letter saying, to the mint, saying, quote, I'm sending you th with this letter 10 of the new dimes, the Mercury dimes, and one of the new half dollars, the Walking Liberty half dollars. If you examine these coins carefully, you will find that they are decidedly imperfect. You will note both on the half dollar and the 10 cent piece a sharp projection of metal on the edge, which is the fin. You will note also, particularly on the half dollar, on the account of its size, the variation in the thickness of the coin, specifically notable at the edge. I went to Philadelphia yesterday to ascertain whether or not this could be overcome, and I find that we are faced with certain mechanical restrictions which make it impossible to produce a coin of uniform thickness and edge. And to obviate the fin edge, as long as we maintain the high relief of the coin as it is at present. He pretty much wrote a big letter to the mint and he's like, so I know we worked out all these problems, but we're still having this problem. And the mint like luckily was kind of skeptical because they're like, okay, you've been like a royal pain. What, what's the deal? And so they were like, okay, well, you have a lot of credibility here, I guess. So we're just gonna let you redo the entire half dollar if you want. And he was like, okay, it'll take me six to eight months. And they were like, okay, well, never mind then. We'll just let Weinman make the, the changes. And then Barber was like, no, um, okay, yeah, I'm gonna add a beaded edge and I'm going to be making li Walking Liberty smaller. And he like kind of backtracked a little bit and tried to make all these changes. But luckily the Mint, at the end of the day, was like, okay, Barber, we're done listening to you. Um, we don't have time for this. We're just going to let Weinman make whatever changes. And um, yeah, so finally these things were finished up after Weinman had made his, his lettering changes. And he, he thanked the Mint with a letter saying, quote unquote, every good wish to you for every day of the new year. And thanks to the Almighty and yourself that the beads are not on the border of the half dollar because he was afraid that Barber's influence would somehow take his design away from the American public. Um, so I thought that that was kind of crazy that there's like a lot of drama going on with this coin and the lengths that Barber was willing to go to to try to discredit Adolf Weinman, who is the, um, the designer of this coin. Um, as for fun facts, um, there was another designer, his name was Victor David Brenner. You will recognize that name because he was the designer of the Lincoln Scent. He wanted to submit designs for the new half dollar also, but the Mint pretty much just told him like, look, we're too busy and therefore uh, we can't be bothered by your interest. Which I thought was interesting that, yeah, they were just like, they wanted to get this out and the Mint has incredibly strict deadlines and they're never meeting those deadlines. And so, it's a miracle that we get any new coinage ever anyways because they're like they're busy with commemorative medals and stuff like that um, a lot of the times at least their designers and their engravers are and then one more little fun fact for today that the walking liberty design that you see in front of you was also used as the uh, same obverse for the american silver eagle as i'm sure most of you guys know 
and it was also used for the Gold Eagle in 2016. So the 26 or the Gold Eagle changes changes designs pretty frequently, and so in 2016 they ended up using this same design, which is really cool. It was the most juicy Silver History Sunday we've had yet, but if you guys haven't and you like this kind of stuff, I'm doing this every Sunday, so please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you should go back two videos ago and enter yourself into the giveaway. And maybe you can win some 90% state-proof quarters. Yeah, so thanks again, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.